Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We are coming to you today to talk to you all about our latest Disney voyage. And the voyage is a good word for it because we just got back from a Disney cruise. It was the first Disney cruise we ever went on. Um, we got back about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's tell them about it. So we went on a four night Bahamian cruise out of Port Canaveral to Nassau and Castaway Key yep. on the Disney Dream. And it was so much fun. It was awesome. And I'll, I might even go as far to say that the Disney Cruise Line might have been the best Disney experience we've ever had. And we've gone to the uh, parks, I can't even tell you how many times. Yeah. We've been to Disneyland, Disney World obviously, numerous times. Um, we never went to any of the international parks or a lot, but not yet. <laughs> But we have gone to a world a million times and land uh, a couple of times and we're actually going to Disneyland again in August. So looking forward to that. But this was our first trip on the Disney Cruise Line and it was, like I said, it might be the best Disney experience we've ever had. And this was Matt's first cruise. I've been on other cruises before. I've been on two Royal Caribbean cruises and those are great as well, but nothing compares to Disney yeah. service and we'll get more into that too. Yeah. and. I, I also might say that I don't know if I ever want to go on another cruise line yeah. outside of that. And I was a little hesitant with cruising at first because I've never been on a boat that big for that long. So I didn't know how I was going to react to it. I don't know if I was going to get like seasick or whatever because you hear stories about that. But I loved it. We didn't really feel the boat moving all that much. I know that could vary from cruise to cruise. Yeah, and the weather of course. But yeah. I've been on, like I said, the two Royal Caribbean cruises and I felt the boat moving way more on those than Disney and I don't know if it's because we just had really nice weather yeah. when we went on the Disney cruise but sometimes we like looked out and we didn't even realize we were moving until we <laughs> saw that we were moving yeah. that's how smooth it was um, the first night um, when we were eating at Royal Palace I did feel the boat a little bit and I wore my sea bands just in case but I don't know if that was just because it was the first night and it was the first like time that the ship was moving or um, or if it was the location of the restaurant and like that made it more that you could like feel it more but yeah. but other than that after that like we hardly felt the boat move yeah the whole time and the reason I think partially the reason why we didn't really feel a boat move all that much is because of kind of like the cruise that we went on we didn't go that far so we left for out of like Port Canaveral um, on a Monday and on Tuesday we were in Nassau uh, as you guys saw in the previous vlogs we had the issue with the weather mm -hmm. and our castaway key day was supposed to be Wednesday um, they switched that to Thursday and our at sea day was Wednesday mm -hmm. so to go from Nassau to castaway key I don't know exactly how far away it is but I can't imagine them being that far away from each other if they're both in the Bahamas mm -hmm. so um, our at sea day, like the boat was kind of just like slowly getting the castaway key. It was just kind of, mm -hmm. it wasn't really moving that fast. Um, but yeah, you're right. We didn't really feel it outside of that first night and we felt it only if like you really like sat there and like concentrated and yeah. you stared off into space and like focused on the boat moving. That's when you felt it. I, I know you felt it a little bit more, but I didn't really notice it at all. And I was also a little bit nervous because we had a room in the fo in the forward in the front of the ship and they say if you don't want to feel the ship to stay as midship as you can so i was a little bit nervous because our room was towards the front but honestly you could hardly feel it moving even when we were at sleep asleep at night yeah it was no, fine it was totally fine and we were nervous because we did the um the guaranteed veranda room with restrictions mm -hmm. so we i don't know if we mentioned that in the vlogs or not but we couldn't pick our room so normal, they just assigned us a room right for so, Miranda. yeah you get a room for like a, a discounted rate and then they just assign the room to you you don't get to pick whether you're forward aft midship uh it's just kind of whatever's available and that's what disney gives you mm -hmm. and i was a little bit nervous because like i said it was my first cruise and i didn't want to be too far away from midship but we were forward and we were totally fine and we were very pleased with our room too even though we didn't get to choose where it was and what exactly we had, we were really pleased with it. Um, you'll see in the vlogs that we were so excited when we walked in and our veranda was like an extended veranda, so it was huge. Yeah, it was nice. And the room was beautiful. Our state room host was awesome. He took good care of us. Roxa, shout yeah, out. Shout out to Roxa. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were very pleased with our room. Yeah, the room was, like I said in the videos, it was a little bigger than I thought it was going to be, honestly. Like I know cruise room, cruise line rooms are small, 
compared to like a regular resort room. Mm -hmm. um, but it, like I said, it was just the two of us and we were very comfortable in there. Yeah. I will say though, if you are like a family with kids, like there is that pull out, uh, that pull out sofa in mm -hmm. the veranda rooms that translates to a bed. Mm -hmm. And if you have little kids, it might be okay. If you have like teenagers, it might you probably want to do two rooms. I think it's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. But if you're just a couple with no kids, or if you're a couple that have kids and you're going on this vacation by yourself, then you're fine. You have yeah. more than enough room. There's in plenty there. of storage. Um, there's plenty of room under the beds that you could slide your suitcases under, so that those aren't taking up a lot of room. And what's really nice about Disney Cruise Line is they have the split bathrooms that yes. you guys will see. Um, in one of the bathrooms, it's just a toilet and a sink, and then in the other um, bathroom, it's the shower and a sink. So, like, Matt could be showering, and if I needed to get ready and do my makeup, nice. it was nice that you had two bathrooms. A lot of cruise lines don't have that. Um, and not all the Disney Cruise Line rooms have that. Oh. The, the inside state rooms don't have the split bathroom. Oh, I and didn't I, realize that. I didn't, um, I didn't look into the ocean view whether they have it or not. I know the verandas and up do. Okay. I know for a fact the inside state rooms don't have the split. And Ocean View, I, I'm not honestly sure. So, yeah. But yeah, that was a great like amenity to have. We were able to do different things and like be finished getting ready at almost the same time, although girls take longer to get ready than guys do. <laughs> um, but it was nice, like, like you were saying, one of us could be in the shower, another one could be like doing their hair or their makeup or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it was just a nice amenity to have instead of like just having to wait for somebody to, to come in. Yeah. The only thing I will say, pro tip, is when you're using oh, the shower, yeah. uh, make sure you close that door because the fire alarm will go off. We learned that the hard way. Yeah. Because uh, I wanted to, the shower's really small and if you did want to use it like to get ready afterwards, like you don't want to be too steamy or foggy. Mm -hmm. So I cracked the door open on our, our first day and um, you can't do that. The fire alarm went off. and The there was... steam was hitting the fire alarm and um, the fire alarm went off and then they called us and they were like, is everything okay? And I was like, oh yeah, we were just showering. And <laughs> so yeah, make sure you keep the door closed so that yeah. doesn't happen to you. But on the Disney Dream, there was three restaurants that we ate at. Um, you do the rotating dining. Mm -hmm. And the first night we ate at Royal Palace. Um, day two and day three we ate at Animator's yeah, Palette. Palette. And then the last night we ate at Enchanted Garden. Yeah. They also have... Um, Palo and, yeah. and Remy. Yes. Um, we didn't eat at those this time because if this was our first cruise, we really wanted to just try the rotating dining. Yeah. And for Maybe. those of you that don't, not to cut you off, but yeah. for those of you that don't know, uh, Paolo and Remy are adults only restaurants that are an additional charge. Yeah. So the three restaurants that we ate at, the rotational dining, that's included in the cost of your cruise. You don't have to pay anything for those mm -hmm. aside from what you paid to go on the, the trip. But Paolo and Remy are an additional cost and they are adults only, just so you know. Yeah. Um, the rotating dining, how it works is there's main seating and there's second seating. We chose to do second seating because usually there's less kids at that time. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the second seating was 8.15. 8, 8, 8, yep. Main seating was, I think, like 5.45. Yeah, 5.45 or 6. But we ate mm -hmm. at 8.15 every night. Um, and it was great. Like you said, less kids. That's always a plus. Not mm -hmm. that there was no kids because there were definitely kids yeah. there. But if you have younger kids, you're going to want to go to the early dinner. You're going to want to go to the early show because mm -hmm. they're going to naturally go to bed earlier. Yeah. Um, but we enjoyed the second seating. It was it was great. Um, yeah. We'll tell you guys about the, the restaurants we ate at too. Mm -hmm. But how it works is um, when you when you board the ship, they give you a key to the world card and on it, it tells you what location you'll be eating at each night because it, it rotates. So the first night we ate at Royal Palace, but um, there could have been people eating at Animator's Palette the first night. Yeah. So that's how it works. Um, so the first night we ate at Royal Palace and we met our servers and how it works is they follow us um, each night to the different restaurants. So they really get to know you, you get to know them, they get to know what you like, um, and so that they could give you suggestions. Yeah, and you get to like build a relationship yeah. with them. Like you guys saw in the videos that we loved our Villa Marta. Oh like they gosh. were awesome. They were honestly one of the highlights of the trip for we us. We looked forward to seeing them every night. Yeah, and um, the first night, like we were still breaking the ice a little bit, yeah. like trying to, we're getting to know each other, but that second night, Actually, we saw Arvel the next morning at Cabanas. Yes, and, uh, uh -huh. you know, and they remembered us by name. Yeah, they know you by name. Yeah. Um, they stick with you the entire trip, so it's it was awesome. And if you ever go on the Disney Dream, you can request servers. Mm -hmm. we, that's something that we found out from Ali, who was the head server. So we asked him, we said, hey, if we ever come back on the ship again, 
can we request our villa in Marta? Like, is that something you could do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. Like you could do it when you book the cruise or you can do it when you first get on the ship and you go to guest services. So <clears throat> I know if we ever go back on the dream, we're definitely requesting them. Hopefully they'll be working then. Yeah, we'll see. it depends on if they're on uh, their vacation time or not. Right, but if you are going on the Disney dream and you want two really great servers, Arbel and Marta are for you. Arbel is so funny. Mm -hmm. And tying back to them, like mm -hmm. that was one of the highlights of the trip. They made it so memorable for yeah. us. Like we have so many memories from dinner. And that's just a, a nod to the, the Disney difference in the service. Yeah, the, amazing. The service on this trip, mm -hmm. I can't even begin to tell you how perfect it was. They don't let you lift a finger. Like we, we kept saying every night at dinner, like the servers would come around and cut up the kids food yeah. for them so that the parents didn't have to do that i was like that's insane yeah and it's they would, just so amazing yeah and they would bring the food to the kids and the mom would be like there was a family sitting near us and they were like all right you know let me cut the food and arville would be like no 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 like i do that yeah and then he would just cut the food for the kid even it was one incredible. night i got like a a seafood dish and Ali came to the table, the head server, and peeled my shrimp for me. Like, yeah. you literally don't have to lift a finger. And even um, Roxa, our stateroom host, he came to the door, introduced himself, asked if yep. we wanted anything like special or any requests. Like, it is just amazing. And that's what really sets Disney apart from all the other cruise lines. Yeah, they went above and beyond to make sure that we had the best experience we possibly could have had. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I know that the Disney service is great. Listen, like I said, we go to the parks so many times. We've mm -hmm. been there, but this was a, a level of service that I've never seen before personally, yeah. just because it is so personable. Like when you go to the parks, all the cast members are amazing for the most part. Mm -hmm. Everyone's great at what they do. They really make you feel welcome. And the people at the resorts, I've never ever had a bad experience no. in the resorts that I can think of. Mm -hmm. But when you go on the Disney Cruise Line, it is so personal to you. Cause like your stateroom host is yours. Mm -hmm. He knows you by name. You see him every morning or her every morning. In our case, it was a guy. Um, and your servers stick with you. So like it's, you feel like everyone is there for you. And that, that was really the difference for me. And also just going back to the fact that they changed our whole itinerary just to make sure that we could experience Castaway Key. Yeah. Like most cruise lines would never change their itinerary. Um, they, our captain knew that the day that we were supposed to go to Castaway Key, the weather was not going to be great. So they changed that day to our day at sea so that they can make sure that we had the, a yeah. good experience on Castaway Key. And we were so happy because that was one of the main parts that we were so excited for. We'd never been there. We were so excited to see it. And I would have like really been bummed if it was yeah. like raining that day. And we so, kind of, we got lucky with that. To be yeah. Honest. Cause like mm -hmm. Disney did do the right thing of course. And they got us there, but Jimmy, our cruise director, who was another amazing, amazing cast member that we had. I can't say enough great things about him. So he would come out every night before the show that you would see, and he would kind of like get the crowd ready for the show you're about to see. And the night before we were supposed to go to Castaway Key, he mentioned that the weather might be a little iffy. Mm -hmm. They officially made the announcement later that night at dinner that they were going to switch the days. But Jimmy and the captain had mentioned the only reason they were able to do this is because another Disney ship didn't have castaway key as a port of call that day mm -hmm. and we were lucky for that because yeah. if there's only one disney ship at a time that goes to castaway key so if the magic of the wonder or the fantasy was going there that next day we wouldn't we be able to go yeah um so we just got very lucky uh, yeah. I, again i know they they obviously did yeah, the right thing but it was also a uh, luck played a big part as to why we were yeah. able to go and Disney always puts safety as their first priority though. Like if it's going to be bad weather, they will try to avoid that bad, bad weather as much as they yeah. can to make it as comfortable as possible for their guests. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah. Um, but going back to the restaurants, the first night we ate at Royal Palace and I have to say that that was probably my least favorite restaurant out of the three that we ate at. Not saying that it was bad by any means, but it was... Food wise, what did I have that night? I think I had steak. Yeah, we had the, sh the like Chateau Briand. Yeah, and it wasn't bad, but then after eating at the other two, I would say that that was my least favorite meal. Yeah. And it wasn't bad. No. It just the the meal that I had, mm -hmm. what I chose to eat on that particular night, yeah. was my least favorite meal on the cruise. It mm -hmm. wasn't a bad steak. It just wasn't as good as the one that you had at Animator's Palette. Yeah. Um, a couple of nights later. Yeah, and the second night we ate at Animator's Palette. 
was pirate night. So yeah. it was a it was a pirate themed meal. Everybody was dressed as pirates. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, and that was one of those nights I had that steak, and that was the best meal that I had um, on the cruise line. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then we ate at Enchanted Garden, and I really liked the theming in there. It was really pretty. Yeah, we ate there for breakfast one morning too. Yeah. that's another thing. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the exact schedule, mm -hmm. but the table service restaurants also do breakfast. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to go to Cabanas, which is the, the buffet, mm -hmm. which is pretty much where everybody goes, you can go to one of the table service restaurants and have. Yeah. Mo uh, we ate at Enchanted Garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ate at Enchanted Garden, which is a buffet. Which but was it's a buffet. Just a little bit. It's like different than. Um, yeah, cabanas. slightly different so, yeah. um, and if you also want like that atmosphere instead of like mm -hmm. you know sitting in the cabanas um, seating areas something else to consider so yeah the service was really good the food for the most part was really good and the restaurants were great um, now we'll talk about the entertainment on the ship which was plentiful yeah uh, to it say was the least amazing the the shows that we saw each and every night were awesome in the walt disney theater we saw um the golden mickeys uh believe and beauty and the beast and hands down the best show out of those three was beauty and the beast that mm -hmm. was incredible i wish we were able to record in there to show you guys some clips yeah. but if you have a chance somehow to find some footage from that show it was amazing amazing it Don't totally miss blew the shows away. when you go and they sh they show the um the shows uh, two different times each night. So if you're going to the main seating, you would watch the show afterwards. But every night we saw the show first and then went to dinner. Right. So there's two different times that you could see it, and don't miss it because the shows are outstanding. So good, like Broadway caliber shows. Yeah. They were incredible. All three of them were great. Um, if I had to rank them, I would say Beauty and the Beast, Believe, Golden Mickey's Last, but all were excellent. Yeah. All were awesome. Um, so we, there was the shows, there's also so many different things to do on the ship itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked to him in the vlogs a lot about Tony from Spain, he was kind of like, like the head guy and mm -hmm. ran a lot of the activities, he was great. Um, we, went, we went to, yeah, Zach, we went to an animation class which Zach uh, taught us how to draw a couple characters. Mm -hmm. Um, we went to a couple of trivias, we went to like a Family Feud style uh, event, mm -hmm. it was just Literally something to do for everybody. Karaoke. Yeah. And bingo. What, bingo. There was just so many activities. Yeah. And bingo. They have like big jackpots for the yeah. bingo. One day was a they had a five thousand dollar jackpot for bingo. Another day they had a ten thousand dollar jackpot. Yeah. It was it was crazy. And that's one thing that the Disney Cruise Lines don't have. There's no casino on board. Um, I know a lot of people are interested in that, but they do have like the bingo and yeah. um, other types of things that you can like win money at, but that's one thing to know if they don't have a casino on board. Yeah. And the entertainment on Pirate Night was great. Yeah. They had an awesome deck party. They had the fireworks were really cool. Disney's the only cruise line that's allowed to shoot fireworks off of their ship, so that was really, really cool to see. Yeah. Pirates in the Caribbean was the name of like the entire show mm -hmm. and then after like the fireworks and stuff they had club pirate and they turned like the whole <laughs> which we really enjoyed yeah it was great they turned like the whole uh deck into like a big like dance party and it was yeah. awesome we had it was so much so fun. fun um but yeah it was great it, the entertainment was top top notch uh, and the from cast the, members were amazing yeah from the all the cast members that were involved the deck parties the, all the events they had in like d lounge which is where a lot of the stuff was mm -hmm. um it was awesome and there was something for everybody and I think that's important to say because a lot of people I would imagine their first guess is that Disney Cruise Line is more geared for kids. I get that and question all the time like oh you and Matt went on a Disney cruise like weren't there so many kids yeah. and the answer yes. is yes there <laughs> are a lot of kids but it honestly didn't bother us and there's there's things to do for every age like yeah. the navigator that you get that tells you um, all the activities throughout the day, it literally goes by age. So it'll say like adults only, um, all ages. Then it'll do like kids from 10 to 13. Or yeah, like, they break like it down. It breaks it age. down. Um, and there's adult only pools, there's adult only hot tubs, there was an adult only beach on Castaway Key, um, the adult only restaurants that Matt yeah. talked about before. So it really like. It didn't bother us. Yeah, if you wanted and to keep your interaction with kids to an absolute minimum, you could. There are ways to there, do it. The adults only pool was really, really awesome, and mm -hmm. there was again adults only, no kids. Mm -hmm. um, Serenity Bay, Castaway Key was awesome. We spent a lot of the day so there. So beautiful. There, um, you, there's like you can go to the spa and do spa treatments, and it's another way to keep mm -hmm. you away. You can go to the adults only restaurants if you want, Paolo and Remy. Mm -hmm. 
uh, there was a lot, a lot of things. They had entertainment at night, which was in like some of the lounges, and they weren't like anyone could have really went to those. But yeah. they, a lot of the more adult themed things, like karaoke, mm -hmm. um, some of those adult like trivia, trivia games, they would be like later on at night, like ten thirty, eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. So most kids are sleeping by that point. Yeah. So you got to do some activities like that. It was just I was impressed with the amount of stuff they had for yeah people with no kids or adults. Yeah. There was yeah. definitely ways to get around it and there was something for everybody. Yeah, but yeah, so overall we had an absolutely amazing experience. Mm -hmm. I would say the number one reason why I would go back and we're definitely going back, we're already talking about going back on a seven night cruise next April yeah. to Eastern Caribbean. So we're we so gotta excited. look into booking that. <laughs> um, and we'll get, let the countdown begin on that one. Mm -hmm. But the service for me was the reason why I would definitely go back. It, mm -hmm. I've never had an experience like that in my entire life where I felt the care of like the cast members or you know mm -hmm. in other places employees like I've never felt cared for as much and like valued as yeah. I did on this trip because no matter what you needed they were able to help you out and get it for you it yeah. was it, it's something the, I've never seen before the, but yeah so if you have a chance to go on the Disney Cruise Line we highly recommend it I always heard great things about it and I was always like yeah yeah one of these days but now like we're all in on cruising mm -hmm. we have the next one circled on our calendar. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to take away from like any of our park time and stuff, but it's a different experience. I won't say one is better than the other. Uh, I love both, obviously. There's things about going to the parks that you're not going to get on the cruise ship. It's a ship, completely different experience. But it's a different you experience. You can't like, compare it. No. But if you guys have been on a Disney cruise, let us know what um, your favorite ship is down below yeah. because the one that we're thinking about going on in April is on the Fantasy, yes. which is the sister ship to the Dream that we just went on. Yeah. But a lot of people say they love the smaller ships too. So let us know what you think down below because we're really interested in trying those one day too. Yeah, we'll definitely. Goal is to try all four. Yeah. So, we'll see. <laughs> so thanks for watching. We hope you're able to get out on a Disney cruise very soon. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.